All right, so today we've got to finish practicing with complex numbers. The first part of it is we've got to simplify these three problems. What's the easy approach? How do you do these? Of course, calculadora. Calculadora. So, so let's break out our calculators. We're just going to type that in, right? First, we've got to check to make sure our calculator is in the right mode. And that's, instead of it being in, it, it can't just be in the real mode. It's got to be in the A plus BI mode. So we're good to go. Now we just type it in. 3, the I button's all the way at the bottom, plus 2, I raised the third. It works. Piece of cake. Piece of cake. Nice. Has anybody tried to do the second one yet? In the second example, we type it in, right? 2I raised to the fifth plus 7I raised to the seventh. Okay, and you hit enter, you get a mistake. How do you fix that problem? You go to math, you go over to num. What do we pick over here? I part, exactly. I part, now we're going to type the same thing in. 2i raised to the fifth plus 7i raised to the seventh. And then you hit enter, and look at that. It does the whole thing for you. Did you get the same answer? Good. Yeah. Now, the only really need to use that I part is if you encounter problems with, like, the calculator giving a ridiculous answer. Let's try the last one. Let's see if we could just punch that last one in and get the right answer. I squared plus I raised to the 12th plus I raised to the 8th. Where? Oops, made a mistake by entering it, so I've got to be more careful with that. I squared plus i raised to the 12th plus i raised to the 8th. And did we get a, we got a good answer, right? Are there any questions on this? Piece of cake? Of course. All right, so, so our real lesson for today, the second part, is operations with complex numbers. And operations, I mean we're going to be adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing is the hard one. And uh, every answer that you give me today has got to be represented in A plus BI form. These, you don't have anything to worry about. We're going to do them all in the calculator, right? And then I'm going to show you one way to do it longhand. I mean, one of the questions I'll do longhand just to illustrate to you. But why waste your time? Your calculator will do these. All you have to do is enter it in. These are not short answer questions on your test or the Regents exam. Guess what kind of questions these are? Multiple choice. I know. Why is this being dumb? So is that the question being asked? Check it out. Your calculator also puts things in A plus BI form. Beautiful, right? So that's the, that's the answer to number one, negative 8 plus 9i. Do me a favor. Do the rest using your calculator, and let's see if we can all get the same answers. All right, so, so this is what you got if you should have punched it into your calculator. And now there have been some requests that said, like, oh, so how do I do this longhand way? The longhand way of doing this is, is that i's will work just like x's, right? What happens if this was question number three was 7 plus 4x minus negative 1 plus 3x? You've got to distribute the negative, so then it's 7 plus 4i plus 1 minus 3i. And then you have to combine like terms. This and this are the same. This and this are the same. 7 plus 1 is 8. Negative 4, I'm sorry, not negative 4. 4i minus 3i is what? Done. That's how you do it the longhand way. According. All right, guys, multiplying. I'm not going to lie, multiplying is ultra ridiculously easy because you get to use your calculator. If you wanted to do it the longhand way, here's what you'd have to do. You'd have to FOIL. Oh, oh, God. 15 plus 20i plus 6i plus 8i squared. And now here's what you got to be careful of. Ultra careful if you want to do this the longhand. Remember, i squared equals what? Whoa. i squared equals negative 1. We talked about that yesterday. Right? But I understand if you get confused by that, we'll talk about it later. So this is 15 plus 26i, and then guess what this last part is? 
minus 8 because i squared is negative 1. And so now what's 15 minus 8? 7 plus 26i. That's how you do it if you wanted to do it longhand. If you wanted to do it longhand. Where is this? Come on, buddy. But we can, we're always able to use our calculators, and all you have to do is just type something like this in. Exactly as it appears. And watch what happens. Booyah! Booyah! So you're going to use your calculators to, to absolutely destroy multiple choice questions. Question number five. Go ahead. Have a go. So if you did it longhand, if you did it longhand, that's what your answer should look like. And is that what you guys got in the calculator? Good. So we're good to go. We're going to move on to the next part. You want to practice again? Good. Good to go. Next part. I want to warn you. I want to warn you. So we've done a lot of stuff in our calculator. Dividing is the heart of these because dividing are the questions that we ask on your short answer. And you can do a lot of work in your calculator, but you have to write out the steps very clearly in order to receive the credit. Okay? Dividing i's works just like dividing radicals. You can't have an i in the denominator. Gosh, you can't have an i in the denominator. How do you get rid of that? It works the same like radicals. If there was a radical in the denominator, what do you multiply by? Starts with a C. Conjugate. Yeah, we got to multiply by the conjugate. That's how you get rid of i's in the denominator. So, so here we go. So you want to multiply by the conjugate of the bottom. The conjugate is just the same thing as the bottom, but with the sign changed in between. You've got to multiply top and bottom by that. And if you do that, that's worth two points for me. One point for getting this correct. Yeah, just by doing this. That's how ridiculous this is. Okay? Now, now, other people might make you show out all your work, but what I'm telling you is you can use your calculator in a real sneaky way. What do you think I'm going to do? Am I going to multiply this all out by hand, or am I going to multiply it in my calculator? Of course, because you don't want to make a mistake here. And showing your work means writing the steps out clearly. So let's do that. Let's do the top first. 8 plus 4i, 1 minus i. Oh, oh my god. Perfect. What about the bottom? One plus i, one minus i, and it's just two. Two points. Two points. One point for one point for doing this. One point for doing this. Okay. Now, now there's a step two. Guys, we're going we're gonna to simplify. Now, you could simplify on your own, right, by crossing stuff out. But guess how I'm going to simplify? Just put it in the calculator. You have to show each one of these steps in order to receive. You, you, this is what I mean. So I have done something. I have showed you how to use your calculators in a, in a brilliant and wonderful way so that you can make sure that you're doing the work correctly. But let me, let me clarify for this. If you don't show this work, I'm going to give you zero points. None. Because I know I've showed you how to use the calculator. I know that you know how to do it. You should know the steps. The calculator is only helping you by not making stupid arithmetic mistakes. But you need to know how each of it is working. So this is the bare minimum amount of work that you need to show for this problem. The minimum. You could show more. The maximum being like you could actually show these two being multiplied out the long way and then condensing it down and then over here simplifying. Or you could do it like this. So nothing less than that is appropriate. Yeah. Guys, next problem up. Have a go. Good luck. Okay, so we had... We had Jessica come up to the board and do the entire problem. She was amazing. She typed it, she used a calculator. She showed all the correct steps. And then, so she multiplied by the conjugate, got this answer, and then she simplified this answer using the calculator. 
The calculator will give you a decimal answer. That's completely fine because this is A plus BI form. Some, give me a decimal that's, that is a fraction, but it looks all messy. Yeah, like a third, right? If you got a third in your calculator, don't write down. You would need to write down 0.3 with a bar over it. If you forget the bar, it's wrong. We're going to put an X. I can't give you that point. So the best thing for you to do is to do what Felice did, and that's convert your answer to a fraction and write it that way. But, there, but both ways of doing the problem are completely correct, and, um, and it's awesome. It's awesome. Okay. Also, be careful because I want you to see, like, when you when it, the answer prints up in your calculator by converting it to a fraction, I think this is, was Dom's question, right? Is the I in the bottom of the 5, or is it right next to it? It's right next to it, like right there. And that's why I want you to put your answer. Guys, we got to talk about vocab. Last part is find the multiplicative inverse. Who knows what a multiplicative inverse is? Let, let me give you some examples. The multiplicative inverse of 2 is a half. The multiplicative inverse of 5 is what? No, is 1 fifth. The multiplicative inverse of 10 is what? The multiplicative in, yeah, it's 1 over 10. The multiplicative inverse of 20 is what? So let me show you something. Flat, straight off the bat, the multiplicative inverse of, one, of 2 plus 4i is what? Now, what's the rule? Can't, can't have, it's the same thing, exactly. Can't have I in the denominator. How do you get rid of that? Yeah, we got to multiply it by the conjugate. And so suddenly this weird word problem question turns into a division problem, right? Now you have 1 divided by... 2 plus 4i. What's the conjugate of 2 plus 4i? 2 minus 4i. Good. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by 2 minus 4i. We're going to use our calculators for doing this. The top I don't need to do. This is, this is too easy. 2 minus 4i is on top. But the bottom, ooh, that's going to be tough, right? Let's do it. Let's do 2 plus 4i, 2 minus 4i, and it's 20. Whoops. And then, is that the last step? Hell no. What do we got to do? You're going to plug that into your calculator. You got to put parentheses around the stuff on top, and you're going to let your calculadora do all the work. Who is? Whoops. Okay. So. You could say that that's the answer. That's completely fine. But what's that in terms of a fraction? 1 over 10 minus what? Either one of those will work. Let's put a big, let's put a big thingy around it. Those are the only two answers that you could receive full credit for. That's it. 